Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm doing is number three video in my series of buying a horse. So my first video was how do you say pick out a horse or how do you find a horse for sale and then how do you go check it out and see if that's the one you want to do. The second video was once you've picked out your horse, how do you go about actually buying the horse? Like what should you do? And then the third video which is today is once you brought your horse home, what should you do then? So some tips with this, when you first bring your horse home, you want to introduce your food slowly because this horse is going from who knows where, for example, like if I um, go from a South Carolina environment to a Lexington, Kentucky environment, those are going to be way different on types of hay, um, even the environment itself. Um, so what you want to do, and the reason why you want to do this is because to prevent colic. Um, some horses still can colic or get ulcers and stuff like that. Um, but uh, if you follow these kind of steps, you're usually not going to have that kind of issue. Um, so what you want to do first is when you first bring it, um, bring them to your house. If you can at all have, let's say a flake of the hay that it had when it was living at that house. So if you're, uh, depending on the person, you may be easily able to ask for that. Um, so yeah, just, just one little flake of hay, and that way you can introduce the hay slowly. Typically hay you don't colic on, but that's your best bet. So do not feed grain that first day. I know you may be, he may be used to having grain. Hopefully they fed him before you picked him up, um, so that way he's fed for the day. But you want to introduce everything slowly so you don't uh, mess up his system. Okay, you um, can't really change like water slowly or anything like that. And usually water is not that issue, but water a lot of times they won't drink because they don't like the taste of it because it's different. So the first couple of days, introduce your hay slowly. So given his old hay, really you can just do it for one day. So when he comes to your house, give him one flake of his old hay and one flake of your hay, and then give him some water. Um, I typically like to keep them in the stall for the first day. Um, the first, well, because usually by the time I've transported them, it's getting close to evening anyway. Put them in the stall that that night, that way you don't worry about them getting out overnight, like get, like let's say they get out in the pasture and somehow decide to jump it. You, you never know, like all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's what I would do for that night. The following morning, at that point, you could just go ahead and use your regular hay. If the horse is not drinking after the second day though, you could add in some electrolytes um, and that will usually help him, even like an electrolyte paste, because that won't hurt him at all and that way it'll help him to drink and keep him hydrated and stuff like that. But usually you don't have issues with that. I uh, also don't usually have issues with colicking with hay, so that's why those are the first two things to check off. Now how to introduce him to the herd. Um, depending on your situation, the ideal scenario would be to have your horse in a small turnout pen where he can see the other horses, but he can't actually touch them. That would be your ideal scenario for the first day. And that way they could kind of get to know each other without it being any kind of issue. That's what you could do the first day. Also, um, you want to think about this, that you would want to um, quarantine. Okay, so no quarantine is different there and it kind of depends on like, do you have a huge boarding barn or you just have one? So what you want to have really, if you can, especially if you're buying a lot of horses, is have a small pin, not have to be super small, like, I mean, you could even use a round pin and have that be your turnout, but have a stall that's quarantined off where hopefully it can't touch any of the other horses, like nose to nose contact. Um, so like even through the stable bars, like if you can have a stable in between um, your new horse and all the other horses. So have him where you can see them and talk to them and all that kind of stuff. And just have him quarantined in like, let's say a round pen or something. Um, and I know that may get him like excited. Um, and if you would, but like I would keep him in a round pen or something that nothing else was going to use. Now, how long should you quarantine? Um, that really needs to happen for about three weeks three to four weeks for the course of two days. Then on the third day, and if need be, give electrolytes, make sure you're drinking water. On the third day, you could start giving green or sweet feed if you wanted to start doing that. Now, if you like to do um, complete feeds or alfalfa pellets or whatever you're wanting to do, you could start incorporating that. But what you'd wanna do is, if you can, 
well since you've waited those days it shouldn't matter but what you would want to do is give a very small amount or if you wanted to give larger then you need to have the old feed that they used to have so let's say he used to be on Purina and you feed Neutrina what you want to do is have three quarters of the amount of his old feed and a quarter of the amount of the new or a way you can offset that if you don't have that feed and don't want to purchase that feed is just start with a, like a quarter amount of the normal feed you'd get now I know you may be like, oh, I might lose some weight. Well, you're only gonna be doing this for like a week. So if he loses like a few pounds, it will make a huge difference. And that's just my opinion. Um, so, but also with that, with a, a quarter amount of feed, he would say normally get, um, then you would also wanna use probiotics. Um, probiotics is a digestive aid just to help with the colic possibilities, uh, just, the, just to help to make sure he doesn't colic or anything like that. Um, probiotics is just something good to have on a horse anyway. Anytime your horse is having kind of digestive issues, just put a, cup, a scoop in there uh, for like a week and then it just fixes everything up. Probiotics is fantastic. So what you'd wanna do then is just every day you can increase more of the grain um, and then you could just do like a little scoop of probiotics as well and then i would say by the end of one week so you've had him at this point one week you could then be on the full amount of feed that you want him to be on and regular hay regular water no supplements necessary at that point because then the probiotics you'll need to use for about seven days um so then you are good to go um for that now um after your quarantine period of three to four weeks, however long you want to, um, then you could introduce them to the herd. So how you'd want to introduce them to a herd is for one day, at least one day, um, have them, it kind of depends on your fencing though. If you have barbed bar fencing or any kind of wire fencing that they could get a foot caught in, I would definitely not recommend this. But I have panel fencing and yes, could they break it? Yes, they could, but I've never had that happen. Um, so what I do is I like to have them where they're right next to each other, fencing or also right next to each other in a stall is absolutely great too because then they can get to know each other without the physical issues that they have um so put them where they could go board, uh, nose to nose let them see each other but then that way they can both separate into the two fields um so i would do that for a day if they all seem fine and they're eating normally then the f next day after the quarantine period and after you've had a little introduction period then turn them out together um again if you have them next to each other in a stall like all the time already um then again just when you turn them out there may be a little scuffling just because there's pecking order differences but typically if you've already had them in a stall next to each other for a couple of days at least then like they will be fine I've only ever had issues turning horses out whenever I didn't know any better and then as soon as I brought them home I just turned them out in the big field with everybody and then everybody like just congregates on them. Um, another option you could do is if let's say you have your little quarantine pasture and um, what you could do is after the quarantine period bring in like one of your calmer horses with them and let them see each other um, maybe not in the super small pen because it depends on how big it is but maybe right next to each other like see if they could be a partner like partner up um and then uh like let them partner up so then they have a friend so then when you're ready to turn out when you're finally ready to turn him out into the regular big pasture let's say you have a 20 acre pasture um what you'd want to do is turn him and his friend out for a couple of hours before you turn the whole rest of the herd out and let him find the fence row and let him know where like the ending is and that way you don't just turn them out and then turn off the huge herd that attacks them and then that just asks for trouble so those are just some of my tips on in introducing your herd into that um and also make sure you go ahead and get a routine like get him set up for the farrier whenever it's time for him get him vet work like even if you don't need vet work right away just go ahead and put him on the schedule um and so that way you just know like when you're going to do that okay so that's feeding whenever you bring a new horse home. That's introducing him to the herd, getting him in the pasture. Um, and then the next step is when do you ride? Well, I always, when I bring a new horse home, I do five to, two, five to 10 days, usually like about five days, five to 10 days of just groundwork. Now, if you have a super trained horse, honestly like two days two or three days is fine but instead of riding for those first two days so let's say you bring him home he's had a night here um and especially if you're going to use a round pen as a quarantine pasture it actually works out great then you can use that as your groundwork area and so it really just doubles great as a as a way to do that is to have a round pen be like your quarantine slash 
early training area. And, and it only is taken up by the horse for three to four weeks, so it's not that bad. So, um, what you could do is do your groundwork. And I get off all of Clinton Anderson after horsemanship with groundwork, and it's a great way to gain respect from your horse and show him trust. Um, so that's why for the first couple days, um, or five to 10 days, uh, do, just do groundwork. Yeah, just do groundwork. And then after that, feel free to go ahead and start riding. Um, I would start riding in it. I would start riding in, in a small area first, either in a round pen or an arena, just to make sure he's safe and like, just to make sure that he is comfortable in that situation and that you're comfortable riding your new horse. Um, and then after, so I would say even after two weeks. So during that quarantine period, it's actually a really smart time to do that, is that's when you get to know the horse by groundwork, get to know the horse with riding um, in that round pen area or a quarantine little pasture. Um, like that be your area that you ride and play with him when. After the quarantine period, then Bring him out, go ride him everywhere, trail ride him everywhere, like, you know, go to horse shows. Because after three to four weeks, you know the horse, and if you bought a finished horse, you're ready to go horse show. But I would definitely not buy a horse and then two days later go to a horse show. Like, that's just asking for trouble. So I would uh, give it like three to four weeks, then you are free to go just wear everywhere. That is, again, just my suggestions on having the best success uh, for low stress for your horse, low stress for you, and a great way to just start a bond that is hopefully going to last a very, very long time. Um, as you start to ride him though more frequently, uh, you can also bond by grooming. So make sure you spend lots of time grooming your new horse and getting to know him. I mean, you spent some money on the horse, why not enjoy him? Um, but finally, as you're starting to ride the horse a lot, um, after you start riding him after a couple weeks, um, just watch out for saddle fit because sometimes your horse may have a different his saddle that you had for the previous horse may not fit him properly. So if he's not moving as well as you'd like, um, just maybe get a saddle fitter out or um, ask some knowledgeable horsemen around you to be like, does this look good? Or honestly watch YouTube videos a lot on it. And I'm planning on doing a saddle fit video. Um, again, I'm not a professional saddle fitter, but I picked up some things along the tips of the trade. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, on going through the process of buying a horse from start to finish. Um, I do plan on doing a series on selling a horse as well. Uh, so make sure you check in for that. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you check out Feebings, uh, Feebings, sorry, Feebings. Do go ahead and check out Feebings. So at www.feebings.com, if you put in the code MCS10, Mountain Creek Stables 10, you'll get 10% off your order and they are fabulous. If you're looking for an item to get, satin sheen, leather, fork hair, bro four-way care is amazing, life-changing, use it every day. Thank you so much for watching. God bless, be adventurous, and I'll see you next time.